So Kevin, thank you so much for joining me on today's uh, episode where we're going to be taking a look at 3D Secure. Um, so I'd like to get right off the bat here of let's get a definition of what exactly is 3D Secure. Thanks, Ryan. It's great to meet you, by the way. I appreciate the time. Um, so 3D Secure is an online security protocol. It's been created by the different card networks to uh, improve the level of security uh, in card not present transactions. Uh, very simply put, it's a mechanism for, for the parties to be able to exchange information between the point of transaction, the card issuer, and the, and the network itself. Uh, there are other parties involved as well, but it's a means for us to be able to transfer, transfer information uh, and increase the certainty uh, of the authenticity of the transaction. Excellent. No, yeah, I, I really like that. Nice, nice, very succinct there uh, with it. So why, I, I, then I kind of have to ask the next question of why is 3D Secure necessary given the, the, the current environment that we're in within the payments landscape? So what I mean by that is that you're also, I mean, like, let's kind of get into like, obviously with the pandemic itself, but then you've also got so many different channels in which consumers can shop from, whether it be e-commerce, online, click and collect, you know, all, all the variations that you kind of dive into when you look at omni-channel commerce here. Uh, but let, let's first kind of talk about why is it necessary to have 3D Secure? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's exactly because of the environment um, that the increase in fraud um, has become much more of a, of a pernicious problem for uh, particularly e-commerce and online transactions. With the percentage of transactions where card not present is happening, uh, increasing sort of monotonically uh, because of the pandemic, um, uh, what you're seeing is that the probability of, of, of transaction fraud is going up uh, commensurately with it. And so there's a need to start to institute even more strictures uh, around the transactions, up to and including, you know, information you can get about transaction history, device information, location, of course, um, and, and other metadata that can feed into a decision engine that can give you, again, um, a transaction approval or a transaction score that gives you a higher, uh, higher percentage of certainty that the, authentic the authenticity of that transaction is true and good. Um, I think what we've seen is during the pandemic, We've seen and, and benefited from a huge increase in online commerce, of course. Um, but what that does is it increases the, the surface area and the opportunity uh, for bad actors and for fraudsters to be able to ply their trade. And they're quite good. Um, they're quite good at building their own patterns to be able to, um, to fool uh, different types of engines and different types of, of decision systems. And with 3DS um, uh, Secure 2.0, what we're bringing is a series of functionality that we can offer to our customers that go beyond um, what you can do with the card present, of course, right? By adding in biometrics or other types of approval forms into the actual transaction uh, through the device, again, we can increase the certainty around the, the quality of that transaction for our customers. Uh, excellent. Now, I know that you brought up uh, 3D Secure 2.0, uh, and I know that Marquetta, uh, Marquetta recently announced kind of the, the 3D Secure 2.0, and I want to get into that in, in a little bit here. Um, but, but I've got to ask, so when we think about authentication and security, often that sometimes goes hand in hand with creating consumer friction on that because it's kind of a wait, hold on, stop. Let's make sure you are who you say you are in this instance. But we know that, especially when it comes to e-commerce, merchants often worry about that cart abandonment rate because, hey, something else is put in front of me here and it's just another step you know, from me getting, getting my purchase fulfilled and getting that check mark that, hey, it's, it's on its way here. But let's talk about 3D secure. 3D secure and how that can potentially kind of remove some of that friction that, that some merchants are very much concerned about. Yeah, no, really, uh, that was uh, the straight feedback we've heard from our customers as well. Is they wanted more control. They wanted more control. They wanted more governance over what was happening in that transaction to be able to, to, to mitigate the potential friction on the consumer side. And so what we've done with uh, our own version of 3DS and, and Marquetta built, uh, we built this from the, uh, from the ground up in-house and the determination to do that was in large part because of the feedback we had from our customers. Um, so we able to give them that control so they could challenge, they could decide to never challenge a particular uh, type of transaction or a particular card because they, they understood things about that account or that user or that card that were, that were relevant to them. Uh, they can challenge once. Um, so interval-based challenges or no challenge at all is fine. Uh, and there were multiple forums that we, we provided them uh, in terms of capability to challenge, whether it's a, a one-time token or it's a biometric option on the device to be able to reduce that friction. 
customers are more comfortable using their mobile device um, to, 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 um, to validate transactions. And there is a sense for consumers as well that we understand from research that, that that makes them feel better, right? You know, your banks are asking for 2FA or MFA, right? And it's become a little bit more of the mainstream. Uh, and I think that makes more customers more comfortable. And what we're doing is providing that capability to our customers through, uh, through Marketa's version of, of 3DS. Yeah, and I, I think that that's interesting because I think it kind of somewhat answers what, what my next question would be here in terms of just that, you know, does 3D Secure have to be implemented on every single card, not transaction? And I think the answer I'm really getting at is no. It's kind of really based upon the comfortability level that a particular merchant has in terms of the score that you were bringing up earlier in terms of like, all right, if we're 99% sure that this person is who they say they are when they fill out these things, well, maybe we don't need to hit them with a 3D. But if we're 80% sure yeah, let's let's hit them with a, the, a biometric authentication of just, hey, just press your fingerprint here and then up, oh, okay, that gets us to a 99%, you know, in terms of like, all right, we're, we're sure that this person is who that they say they are. Um, so now let, let's kind of get into that 3D Secure 2.0. What are the differences between the first version and now 2.0? Yeah, so, so the biggest version are going to be both the protocols that are used are, are slightly different, but in, in most part, it's the functionality and the richness that we're providing to customers in terms of what the capabilities are around our version of it. So we talked a little bit about governance and controls, allowing our customers to use the information they have about their accounts and their users, the relative sophistication around the behavior and what's trending to be able to make decisions on their own, whether to challenge or not challenge and to provide what kind of challenge. We're also providing them with reporting and metrics. Uh, and so they're starting to get a lot more visibility into the calls, the transactions that are being made, uh, the data around those transactions, the successful or unsuccessful outcomes of those transactions. So by providing them with a portal and access to that data, they can start to analyze the, and, and, and add that to their behavioral kit of what they know about their customers and the accounts and the cards themselves. So those are some big differences from the earlier version to the current version. We've also streamlined a lot of the implementation details and scenarios. Um, not every one of our customers is an expert in 3DS or in Challenge UX. Uh, and so we're providing them increasingly with a streamlined uh, way of implementing with also plenty of suggestions around the UX and the best, pra best practices around how to do things uh, when it comes to the consumer experience. We don't, we don't want to be in the business of developing their apps. That's for our customers to do and deliver and, and as, they, as they know how. But we want to provide them with uh, as much uh, consultation and guidance um, as we can from our own experience. Yeah, and, I, and I'm glad that you brought up the, the UX side of things because I think it is critically important for merchants to get also that part right. Because, I mean, it certainly can be a little bit jarring for a consumer that they're going through and, and typically maybe their normal checkout behavior is just that it's a very seamless and it's kind of a maybe a one page build out. And then all of a sudden to be met with kind of this pop up iframe of like, wait, w w where is this coming from? W w what is this doing? But if you brand it and you structure it in such a way that it is such closely aligned with everything and has certain notifications or whatever the whatever the best practices are you're you're better to be able to provide that comfort level for your end consumer to say okay yes these two are tied together this isn't something you know i didn't get a malware virus where now oh, i'm being asked to enter this and then those credentials get stolen from me um of it so i, I think I'm really glad that you brought up that because I do think that that's a very critical component to all of this. Um, but but now as we're, as as particularly in the United States where um, you've got the new time, uh, the real time payment rails, you know, obviously you have the clearing house that has there and Fed, the Federal Reserve is coming out with their Fed now in a couple of years here. So I would have to ask where that payment is essentially is instant. It happens right then and there. How important is 3D Secure going to be as more as we get closer to ubiquity when it comes to real-time payments. Yeah, yeah, no, good, good question. Uh, I, I, I don't have the crystal ball to tell you exactly. I think the things that we can say with certainty are that um, the extent to which we can improve uh, the data surrounding a transaction and still maintain the the levels of performance that we have. Right, we're talking in terms of you know a couple hundred milliseconds on my side of the wire. Um, and make sure we're working with customers to present a super clear, crisp, you know, experience on the user on the user experience side on the UX side. So it's very clear what's happening, even if it's a new thing, even if it's the first time you've seen this thing. It should be super clear about what you're expected to do next, 
what the risk is, what's being asked of you and who's asking. I think if all those things come together over time, then I think the industry is going to feel much, much more comfortable about real-time payments, right? About instantaneous transfer. And those are things that we've got to get right as part of the payments infrastructure community. We've got to load the back end with sufficient metadata, with high performance and low latency characteristics. And we also have to allow the flexibility that we're starting to allow with our customers through 3ES2.0, right? So you decide when and where you want to challenge. You decide the form and the factor in how you want to challenge that. So the more that we build breadth in that area, uh, I think the more successful we're going to be as we start to move to an increasingly real-time future in terms of money movement. Excellent. Yeah. Now, when when we talk about, because I mean, I, obviously that that 3D Secure 2.0 is obviously a service. Um, so I want to kind of talk a little bit about return on investment here. So an organization that's going to be implementing 3D Secure 2.0, what what does that return on investment look like? Like how much is my fraud going to go down by? I know also one of the things that considers obviously also chargeback rates as well too. That's in there, which is certainly a large cost for merchants. So what what at a high level, what can I really realistically expect from a return on investment by implementing 3D Secure 2.0? Yeah, no, really good question. Um, I, I think the number one thing is, you know, we're giving the control back to our customers to be able to determine when and where and how much risk they want to take. And so to a certain extent, or to a great extent, that risk belongs and will continue to live with those customers. And, and, and that's where it should live, frankly. Um, after that, we're going to try and load up and be able to sort of help them de-risk as much as possible. So if they want to turn the dial down, so to speak, um, they should be able to bring their risk down substantially. I think some of the research indicates that you know, the probability of, of fraud in a transaction where, where cars not present is something goes up to something like 81%. It's really staggering. Um, and particularly, again, at a time where so much of the uh, e-commerce is happening um, because of the pandemic. I think those are serious risks that, that our customers need to contemplate. Um, exactly what the percentage in terms of return investment, I think that's going to vary for, by customer depending on how much, how they calibrate their risk profile, frankly. Okay. No, I, I think that, that that's certainly fair because, yeah, again, like if you, you sit there and say, well, I'm going to create 3D Secure 2.0 and basically challenge every transaction, well, then obviously that there's more cost to the service because you're doing it per every. But I think it does kind of speak to to your whole of okay, well, what what risk are you willing to tolerate, and what other data do you have to kind of say, well, this is a risky versus this is not a risky transaction uh, there. So Kevin, uh, I really appreciate the time taking a look at 3D Secure uh, 1.0 and also 3D Secure 2.0, uh, and thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Ryan. Take care.